For this video, I'd like to show you how to remove leading or trailing spaces from text, but also how to remove redundant spaces within the text. Let's see how to do this in Excel, but then we'll also see how to do this in Power Query. Now, this sounds like a very easy thing to do, and it is in Excel, but it's not so easy in Power Query. For Excel, this is very simple. Let's create a new column here called Output. And Excel contains a function called Trim. So if I say equals Trim, and then all I have to do is point to the cell that has the text I want to trim. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, I get the cleaned up text. So the Trim function removes leading, trailing, and internal redundant spaces. But what if you wanted to perform this same operation in Power Query? I've brought the products table into Power Query, and we can clearly see that there are leading spaces before some of these items and redundant internal spaces. It's not so obvious about the trailing spaces, but if I click in one of those cells and then in the preview, click a little bit to the right of one of the entries and you can see that the cursor lands somewhat away from the text, which tells you there are some spaces that follow this text. So we want to get rid of the leading, trailing, and internal redundant spaces from the text. Power Query does contain a trim function, and we can just right-click on the column heading and say Transform Trim. That will get rid of the leading and the trailing spaces. So if I were to click next to one of these products and then go to the right of that product text, you can see that those trailing spaces are gone. But it didn't do much for the internal redundant spaces. So like here with noise-canceling headphones, I've got one, two, three spaces between these two words. So trim does not get rid of internal redundant spaces. It would be nice if it did, but it doesn't. I've often hoped that Microsoft would create a new kind of trim function, maybe called internal trim or int trim, that would just get rid of the internal redundant spaces. Because then we could just say right click transform trim for the beginning and end, and then internal trim for the internals. But since that doesn't exist, we're going to have to create it ourselves. Let's delete that step. To remove the internal redundant spaces is going to take a four-step process. Now, luckily for us, each step is relatively simple. So we'll perform these steps one step at a time so you understand exactly what the thought process is. Then we'll pull all these steps together into a single step that you could use either as a single step, or you could take it to the next level and turn it into a reusable function. So that way we could use it on a variety of different columns. At the end of this, we're going to see how we can use that custom function and remove all the redundant spaces from the entire table with one step. Be sure to download this sample file so you can follow along with me or just open it up and examine the steps just to see how I created it. The steps we're going to employ will be a split step, a transformation step, a remove null step, and then a combine step. These steps will not only remove the internal redundant spaces, but they will also remove the leading and trailing spaces. So think of this like we're creating a super trim function. So the only step we have in our query right now is we've connected to the source, which is a table called products in the Excel workbook. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to split the text by the spaces. Now what we don't want to do is go up and utilize the graphical interface and the split column feature, because we don't want to actually split this into multiple columns. We want to split each row into a split list. So we're going to go up to Add Column, Custom Column. Let's call this Custom Column Step 1. The function we're going to use is a text split function. Open parentheses. The first argument is the text we want to split, and that's coming from the Products column. Comma. What is going to act as the separator when we perform the split? Well, that's going to be the space. Double quote, space, double quote. Close parentheses. Hit OK. And that produces a column of nested lists. If we peek into one of these columns, what we'll see is a list of every split element. Now, since we split by the spaces, we're not capturing the spaces. There is no space in this. This is just the text that was between the spaces. And of course, there's no text between the spaces, so there's no text in these cells. If I were to look at Gaming Keyboard, we can see that Gaming Keyboard was split between the space, but there were four spaces before Gaming Keyboard, and there are three spaces after it. So each one of these lists is just the output of that split operation. The next thing we want to do is to replace all of these empty cells with nulls. Now we can't use the GUI for this because the transformation tools will want to work on the data that's in these cells which say list, but we have to look at a deeper level because we want to go through each row of the nested list and replace the empty cell with a null. So we're going to have to write our own formula for this. So we'll go up to add column, custom column. We'll call this one step two. And since we want to transform those nested lists, 
we're going to use a function called list transform. Open parentheses. Where are the lists? Those are coming from step one, comma. And here's where we have to take a little responsibility for the grammar and the syntax. Our formula needs to process each of those lists, and we're going to use an if statement against each list. So the if statement will be if we want to test to see if the length of each item in the list is zero. So we'll use a text length function. Now I'm not going to point to step one. So when the each is examining a list, we need text.length to examine each row in that list. So we'll use an underscore, close parentheses, and think of that underscore as one of the rows of the list. And we need to see if that row is equal to zero. Now, if it is, then insert an all. Else, just show me what's on that row. And so we'll use the underscore again to represent the row of the list. Close parentheses, hit OK. So in this case, we have a list that has gaming and keyboard with a variety of leading and empty rows. But the second version of that has gaming and keyboard with nulls. So we could walk through any of these lists and see that anywhere where there was an empty, we get a null. But anything where there was one or more characters, we just represent whatever was there. So now that we have those nulls, we can filter each list by the nulls. In other words, filter out the nulls. Since we're working with embedded lists, so it's almost like we're working with something inside something else, we don't really have many graphical controls to take advantage of, so we have to do it ourselves. I realize my column name isn't the best it could be, so let me fix that real quick. So to filter out these nulls, we'll go up to Add Column, Custom Column, and we'll create Step 3. Let's move this down a little bit. So Step 3 needs to walk through each of these lists, removing the nulls. Well, we have a function that will do that. It's a list function called Remove Nulls. The only parameter we need to feed it are the lists that contain the nulls, and those are coming from step two. Close parentheses, hit OK. So here was the original data. Then we turned that into a list where that text was split by spaces, which resulted in a list of words and empty cells. We then turned those empty cells into nulls, and then we filtered out the nulls. The only thing left to do is to recombine anything that's left over from the step three list, but separate each element by a space. And so that's where the text.combine function comes into play. Let's go up and create another custom column. This one will be called step four, and we're going to use a text combine function. Open parentheses. Where is the text coming from? It's coming from the third step. Comma, what should I separate each item from that step three with? That's going to be a space. So double quote, space, double quote. Close parentheses, hit okay. And now we have our final output. So again, just to recap, we started with split text. We turn that text into a list, splitting each element by the space. We then replaced all the spaces with nulls, filtered out the nulls, and then recombined the text using a single space. At this point, if you wanted, you could right click and remove the other columns. And there's your clean text. So I performed this in steps so we would understand exactly what each step is responsible for. But let's see how we can do this in a single step. Let's open the queries panel on the left, and I'm going to right click and duplicate this query. Let's delete every step except the first step. So I'll go here to step two, right click, delete until end. So now all we've done is connect to the source. Let's go up to add column, custom column. Let's start with step one, where we utilize the text split function. Text split is going to look at products, comma, and we're going to split at every space, double quote, space, double quote, close parentheses, and we'll hit okay. So that gave us the output of the first step. So these are those same lists with all the empty rows. But let's go to our gear and go back into that same function. This time we will wrap the text split function within the list.transform function. So we'll type in list transform, open parentheses, and the lists will come from the text.split function. So that's our first argument, comma. Now what transformation do you want to apply to those lists? So as before, we have to say, go through each of the lists and ask if, and we want to see if the length of the text in each row is equal to zero. So we use a text length function. Open parentheses. What am I looking through? Each row of the list. Close parentheses. And then see if that is equal to zero. If it is, then place a null in that cell. If it's not, or else, repeat whatever's in that cell. Close parentheses. Let's hit OK. And so now these lists have nulls in the empty cells instead of empty cells but we're still in a single step, a single function. Let's go back to the gear. Let's click in front of this function, the list.transform, 
And now we want to remove the nulls. And we'll wrap this inside of a list, remove nulls. Open parentheses. Everything from the previous bit of logic is what the list.remove nulls will look through. So we just need to place a close parentheses on the end of this. Hit OK. Now those lists have been reduced to just the text elements. Still in one function. Let's go back to the gear. We'll go in front of the list.remove nulls and we'll wrap this inside of a text combine function. Open parentheses. It's going to combine whatever the output is of all of those prior actions, comma, and we're going to combine them with a space. So double quote, space, double quote. Close parentheses, hit OK. Let's expand our formula bar. So now we've done all four steps from the previous example in a single step. Now that's pretty cool, but I really don't relish the idea of having to write this every time I want to remove internal redundant spaces. So let's see how we can turn this into a reusable function. There are several ways to turn a query into a function. The way I'm going to show you is not meant to be the best or the worst way. It's just a way. So if you're more comfortable with another method, feel free to use that. But let's go over here to the products to query, and we're going to right click on it and say create function. Now when you create functions this way, the functions are expecting to have a parameter already created that's gonna get passed to this function. Since we don't have any created parameters and that's beyond the scope of this video, we're going to just go ahead and create it without any parameters. The name of this function will be called super trim. Hit OK. Power Query will create that function, but also preserve the original query. So if for some reason your function doesn't work properly and you want to go back to what you had, you haven't lost anything. That's one of the reasons why I like creating functions using this method. But let's go to the super trim function. This isn't ready to use because it needs a little bit of tweaking. So we'll go up to the advanced editor and we get a warning that says, hey, if you edit this function, you may lose the ability to get some automatic updates. We're not concerned with that at all. This is too simple of an example. So we'll hit OK. The first thing I like to do is go in here and add some blank lines between each step, just so this is a bit easier to read. The next thing is to go ahead and get rid of this source step because this will already have been utilized before anybody uses this function. So we'll delete that step. The next thing I'm going to do is to give the single step within this function a better name. So I'll just rename this to good text. Now I'll also need to rename that here because the final output will take whatever has been stored in the good text variable. We're not going to need this final in source step and we're not going to need this initial let step either. The only part of this first line that we'll need is this piece right here. So we'll delete this that comes before it. And inside those parentheses, we need to create a variable that will hold the text that is passed to this function when we go row by row in our table. So the name of my variable is going to be called bad text. You can call this anything you like. We also need to data type this so it understands what you're supposed to be passing to it. So bad text will be coming in as text. I like to have my let statement on a separate row. Since the invocation of the function will create a new column, we don't need to use the table add column function. And since we're passing it in an argument, it's not going to be looking at a previous step name in the query. And the name of that new column will be declared by the user when they invoke the function. It's going to already walk through each row of the passed in table. So we don't need the each. So let's get rid of all that. And we don't need the final closing parentheses because that went with the add column function. Our final adjustment has to deal with the field that was examined when we first built the text.split. We were passing it the products column, but the custom function needs to know what it's processing based on what was passed into that function. And that data was passed in and stored in this bad text argument. So we need to take bad text and place that bad text argument here in place of the products column. So take whatever comes with bad text, split it, use the transform to run the if, replacing the empty cells with nulls, remove the nulls, combine what's left over using the space. Let's hit done. We'll go back to one of our product queries. And here's the one where we use the entire function manually typed out to create the output. But let's see if we can replicate this exact same output using now the custom function. So we'll choose our products column, go up to add column, invoke custom function. The name of this custom function will be fixed text, and the function we're going to exercise is the super trim function. Which column do you want to exercise it on? We want the products column. We'll hit OK, and now we have the same output. This super trim function can now be reused across multiple columns without having to rewrite the code. In fact, let's demonstrate the reusability nature of this function. 
Let's do a close and load. And let's bring in this table that has multiple columns. Now these are the same items in each column. I've just mixed them up a bit. But let's go up to from table range. We've brought this table in. Let's minimize this. With products selected, I'll go to add column, invoke custom function. We'll just call this test one. And I'm going to use super trim on products. But now I could go here to the second column, invoke custom function. We'll call this one test two. And I'll invoke super trim. Then I'll go to the third column of text, invoke custom function, we'll call this test three, and I'll invoke super trim. So here are the three cleaned columns. Being able to reuse a function has definite advantages, but suppose you had a hundred columns you wanted to run this on. I don't think I'd want to execute this function a hundred times. So let's look at a really cool trick where we can run this function across every column in the table. So I'm going to delete all those steps. This time, I'm going to add a new function by just clicking the FX button. And just after the equal sign, I'm going to utilize a table function called transform columns. Open parentheses. The table that I'm going to transform is what's coming from the source step, comma. The second argument is which columns do we wish to transform? Now this means it wants a list. All lists go in a set of curly braces. But if you leave this list empty, that means to process all columns, so we're no longer dependent on specific column names. So after the curly braces, comma, the third argument is which transformations to apply to each of those columns. And that is going to be our super trim function. Close parentheses, hit enter, and we've just cleaned up all leading, all trailing, and all redundant internal spaces in every column of the table. So now you've seen how to remove leading and trailing spaces either step by step, how to turn that into a reusable function, how to use that function on a series of columns either individually or in bulk using the table.transform columns function. You may not use every facet of this little project, but hopefully you've taken away some little gems that you can apply here and there throughout your work life. So as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to download the sample file so you can see all of this code. Thanks so much for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.